So last night, a viewer posted a question and a comment, and I totally agree with the comment, but it was kind of amazing. He asked, what do all of us think of the rumors that there will be an Assassin's Creed Japan or an Assassin's Creed China? And I thought this was very profound. He even said that the game Ghost of Tsushima actually proves that this can be done. And I totally believed in that. So now, I want to discuss your thoughts and just information that I know that I've heard and things that we may have all heard through the internet and rumor and stuff like that. Before we get started though, please, by all means, make sure that you do us both a favor. Hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so that you never miss any of these contents, these glitches, anything, whenever I post it at all. I'm Dark Shot of the YouTube Assassin, and let's get into this. So almost every time there's a brand new main AC release, people immediately will say, it's going to be Japan, it's going to be China. They have proof, they have evidence, they show all these pictures, designs, graphics, stuff like that. All kinds of stuff. And the thing is that 90% of it is not true or it's older stuff that they haven't worked on. It's concept art, it's fan art, it's stuff like that. Usually it's not really anything factual, and, and that's the sad part, is that it's not factual. Now, one of the things that I've known ever since the very, I think the second Assassin's Creed, I know that they said something to the effect that they would never actually do an Assassin's Creed, Asia, Japan, China, anything like that because it's kind of cliche and they want to separate assassins from ninjas they don't want to put them together they want you know the assassins to be their own thing so usually they'll deny those kind of rumors they'll say that they're not doing it they'll say that they're never doing it but who knows anymore like who knows if they'll do it again i mean we've seen them with an asian theme and it actually kind of worked The unpopular but still made kind of side-scroller Assassin's Creed Chronicles originally had three parts. One of them was China dealing with an assassin named Xiao Jun who actually went and found Ezio Auditori during his last days of life and tried to learn from him different ways of the assassin now in this game she is captured her clan her assassin group is actually destroyed and it was just a big side-scrolling adventure going through defeating a group of templars called the tigers and it it looked good but the thing is that it wasn't popular because of the fact it was a side-scroller when people wanted a new Assassin's Creed game, they wanted a new Assassin's Creed game. They did not want something like this. But the thing is that the story was actually pretty good. If you actually played through it. Although some people really didn't have the patience to play through it because they weren't impressed with the whole side-scrolling thing. Honestly, this would have been a great attempt at seeing an Assassin's Creed kind of Asia China or Japan, something like that, if only they actually did it the way regular Assassin's Creed games were. It kind of failed, it kind of flopped. Some people really weren't into it. Some people played it just because it was an Assassin's Creed title. Me personally, I didn't think it was that bad. It, for a side scroller, it was pretty cool, but it felt more like it was like an iOS or, you know, like an Apple Store kind of game. It really didn't have the feel of an actual 
Assassin's Creed game, which is what we were craving when this came out. But again, great attempt. Silver Assassin goes on to say that the brand new game, Ghost of Tsushima, actually proves that you can actually do an Assassin's Creed in Asia without any problems. It's actually pretty wild. If you haven't played it or don't know about it, it's the tale of a samurai named Jin Sakai who is going to do anything he can in order to save his people from the invading Mongols on the island of Tsushima where he lives. Now, this thing gets really wild really quickly. It's actually pretty amazing, but it does have a lot of assassin features. You can assassinate. You can attack enemies from behind, around, whatever. It's wild. Look at that. It's brutal. It's bloody. It's absolutely incredible. And it's one of those games that should not be missed. Of course, it's a PlayStation exclusive, but if you have the chance, definitely make sure that you pick it up because it is actually pretty wild. It's a pretty amazing game. I wouldn't want you to miss it. Anyway, there are a lot of similarities between it and Assassin's Creed, and I really don't like the comparisons. It kind of stands on its own two feet, but there are similarities. As you can see, there's rescuing the people of Tsushima who are just being captured by Mongols and tortured and whatnot. Sometimes they give you quests. Sometimes they tell you where to go to like your next objective or sometimes they even give you other things to do there's also that little symbol that you saw there are technique points it becomes open world after the initial tutorial phase which all these games have but the thing is absolutely massive the entire map you're finding all kinds of collectibles you're going to different towns you're helping people out you're purchasing different gear there's just tons of little side missions and everything that you can do. But unlike Odyssey, it's not a grind fest. You can upgrade your weapons, your outfits and stuff like that. And then you could also, on top of that, change their look, their design. You could make it look however you want. There are tons of options to make it look just absolutely insanely wild. The same thing with charms. Charms work kind of like engravings. There are so many different charms that you find either from shrines or completing objectives and each charm does something different. It'll help you out. It'll do wild things. It'll increase your stats, increase your health, all kinds of stuff like that, just like an engraving. The same thing with outfits. Outfits, depending on what you wear, really don't do like a lot or anything like that, but you've got all these different design options. The different masks as well, they all look kind of like wild. There's so many different ones that you could come across and wear and just mix and match on your character and whatnot. The real meat and potatoes is going to be the actual outfits themselves. They all do something different. The samurai clan armor, as you can see, reduces damage by a major amount, massive increase to health, taking damage grants 30% resolve. Resolve is those little yellow balls that you saw in the lower left hand corner, which allow me to do all these crazy special moves. Broken armor, this actually does nothing, this is your starter armor. But you find other armor and then you could also change the colors of it if you wanted to. Different armors do different things besides giving you a different look. It's actually pretty cool. So one of the most incredible things, this, the Sakai armor, allows you to do a standoff and hit like five people in a row. One of my favorite things is the traveler's attire here, which allows me to, every time I get close to an artifact or a, a scroll or something, something that like I'm looking for that you would normally wouldn't see with your naked eye or that you wouldn't know is around, this causes the controller to pulse. So that's really helpful when you're trying to find stuff. And then, of course, they have, just like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the outfit that almost has you naked. Maybe there's a nude heroes glitch for this one as well. We'll see. 
but they've also got techniques, tons and tons of techniques, different things that help you out. You gain ability points and then you put one, two or three into each one. That's how much you would spend. I believe that around here is where you started spending two and the bottom one was three. There are mythic attacks. These you could only learn from legendary fights and whatnot. So you definitely want to know all these and whatnot. Exploration. These actually should be something that you put in Assassin's Creed games in the future in which it helps you explore your surroundings. This one will help you find all health increase items. This one will help you find resolve increase, shrines, uh, different artifacts and whatnot. The Inari shrines, which are like fox dens. And then it's not just that. There are stances. Different samurai stances do different things. It just gets wilder and wilder the more points you put into it and the more you learn. It's actually incredible. It gives you a whole different fighting style. And then the ghost legends, these weapons and these tactics actually increase again. It makes the whole game a lot wilder like this one. This one allows assassinations, safe landing. You roll just before landing to avoid damage from all but the highest falls. And then Chain Assassination 2 and 3. So, again, very similar to Assassin's Creed Odyssey and the direction that Assassin's Creed is going, but different in its own right. Now, you look at the collections. It has the, the collections just like everything else. You do all these random things. It unlocks trophies, but it also unlocks extra points, extra abilities, so that way you get those techniques a lot faster. And different things do different items. They, they offer different techniques. So, like, if you find all the crickets, you're actually able to use the accessories. You could actually change the song that you want to play. And in all honesty, this one I usually leave. It lets the sun come out if it's raining and whatnot. So, I mean, very, very similar incredibly similar but different in its own right because there is a lot more action in ghost of tsushima than there is in assassin's creed odyssey and it's less of a grind fest i got all those items all that gear real quick without even really breaking a sweat i really didn't grind it didn't feel like a grind it felt like i was just playing the game and just unlocking stuff left and right so it's pretty amazing. Honestly, if you're interested in Ghost of Tsushima, check out my gameplay on this channel because I'm playing through it and I actually posted a lot of it. It looks absolutely amazing. You're going to see some crazy sword play and whatnot. It's just outstanding. Anyway, this is something that Assassin's Creed could do. And that's what Silver Assassin was pointing out. Like, this can be done. It's just a matter of how and when and why won't they do it. That's the other problem. Why will they not do it? But what do you think? Do you think that they should make a Assassin's Creed China or an Assassin's Creed Japan? Do you think that it would do well? Would you actually play it or would you feel like it would just become another ninja game? And how do you feel about the developers wanting to stay away from it just becoming another ninja game as opposed to an Assassin's game, which is basically like a big difference. I mean, there's a difference between Assassin's and Ninja. So I'm pretty sure they want to keep their thing completely ninja free being that it kind of defeats the whole purpose of assassin i mean yes we could put a whole bunch of things as far as templars as mongols or anything like that basically that's what it ended up in ghost of tsushima basically you could just call the mongols actually uh, uh templars or even have them be backed by the templars but the thing is that ghost of tsushima basically became another ninja game at its core it was all about a samurai but then that samurai actually just delved into the world of of ninjutsu 
He basically started doing all kinds of stuff that ninjas would do. So it becomes something totally different. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think and let me know what improvements you would make if we were making an, a sort of Assassin's Creed Japan or Assassin's Creed sort of ninja game. Like, what would you do? What kind of differences would you have? Let me know that in the comments below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out an awful lot. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And until the next one, take care.